In this video, we're going to learn how to declare and initialize arrays of objects in C++. The first thing we'll do is make a simple class for representing squares. And our square objects are going to have two member variables. They'll have a side length, and we'll make that an int value. And they'll have a color, and we'll make that a string. And we'll make a member function for printing out the square data. So we'll output the side length here. And then we'll also output the color as well, followed by an end line. And then we can declare arrays of square objects by saying square squares three. And what this will do is declare an array of three square objects. And then we can try to loop through the squares and print each square. So we'll say four int i is equal to zero, i is less than three, i plus plus, and we'll output squares at index i dot print. So with an array of objects, we can access the array elements using the same syntax as any other array. But what's gonna happen here? When we declare the array, how do these square objects get constructed? They're gonna get constructed the exact same way as a single square object would be constructed if we said square, square one, and declared a single square object here, square one. So what's gonna happen is, in a class like this, where we have no constructor defined, C++ is gonna use this implicit default constructor. And I say implicit because we can't see it, but C++ will effectively put it there when we go to compile the program. And the implicit default constructor is basically going to initialize the member variables the same as if they were declared inside a function, where in the case of a primitive type like int, side length is gonna be filled with whatever data just happens to be in memory. So it could look like junk. And in the case of an object like string here, color is going to be constructed using its default constructor, which in the case of a string is gonna result in an empty string. So let's try to save this now and run our program. And we should find that we get some junk data in the case of length. And we do, because the side length member variable was populated with whatever just happened to be in memory. In the case of the color member variable, we see that we get these blank strings as output. So that's the behavior we can expect if we don't define our own constructors and we just rely on the implicit default constructor. Now let's try defining our own default constructor. So a default constructor is the constructor with no arguments. So we'll say here square, open bracket, close bracket, and we have no arguments to this constructor. And we'll set side length to zero, and we'll set color to black by default. Now if we save and run this, we're going to find that our own default constructor is called instead of the implicit default constructor because we have side length of zero and color of black for each one of these squares here. So that's the behavior we can expect if we define our own default constructor. What if we didn't have a default constructor, but instead had a constructor with multiple arguments or even just one argument? So let's see what happens when we comment out this default constructor that we've defined. And we define our own constructor that has two arguments now. It'll accept a length, and it will accept a color, and we'll set the squares length and color based on the arguments provided. So we'll say color is equal to set color here. And what's gonna happen now? So now we've got this array of square objects that we're creating, but our constructor here requires two arguments. If we save and run this, we'll actually get an error where it says, no matching constructor for initialization of the square object. So what's going on is that because we've defined our own constructor here, the implicit default constructor is not provided by C++. To create a square object, we now have to provide two arguments to the constructor. And here, we're not doing that. We could still initialize three square objects though, by explicitly calling this constructor for each element. So here we could say is equal to, and we'll say square 
and we'll say eight and maybe red. And then square and we'll say four and maybe orange. And then square and we'll say two and maybe green. And this will declare and initialize an array of three square objects using this constructor we've defined that accepts two arguments here. And if we save and run this, it'll actually be okay now. And we get three squares with those lengths and those colors. Now, if we did define a default constructor like this, then we don't actually have to provide these constructors here. We could actually go back to this and just say square squares index three, and that will actually declare three square objects and it will use our own default constructor. So if we save and run this, we're gonna be back to having three squares that have the color black and the length zero. Another interesting way we can initialize an array of square objects is in the case where we have a constructor that accepts a single argument. So here we'll make a constructor that accepts a single argument. We'll say square int set length, and this constructor will only accept a length argument and we'll use that to set the side length of our square. And we'll default the color to the color black. So now here, we're defining a new constructor that accepts a single argument, the length, and we'll set the side length to that. And we just set the color to a default here, black. We can actually use this constructor here in a very simple way. We can say here squares is equal to and we'll say two, four, and eight. And this will actually use two, four, and eight as arguments to our square constructor that accepts a single int argument. And if we save and run this, we'll end up with three black squares of length two, four, and eight. And basically what goes on is that the constructor is being called with each one of these arguments. It's the equivalent to this here, but we don't actually have to put in the constructor explicitly. C++ will actually do that work for us automatically if we just say two, four, and eight here. One behavior that's kind of neat is that if we don't supply enough arguments or enough constructors while initializing our array of objects, the default constructor will be called for the remaining objects. So let's say, for example, we just have two here. So if I just have two, this constructor here will be called to initialize the first object and the default constructor will be called to initialize the remaining two objects. And if we try this out, the first square will have a length of two and the remaining two have a length of zero because the default constructor is called to initialize those objects. We could also say here, comma square and we'll say maybe five and red. And we'll use our constructor with two arguments to initialize the second element in the array. And again, we'll get the same behavior where for any remaining objects to be initialized in our array, the default constructor will be used. So if we save and run this, we use our constructor with one argument to initialize the first element in the array. We use the constructor with two arguments to initialize the second element in the array. And the default constructor is used to initialize the third element in the array. So that's kind of a neat behavior there. And so that's the basics of declaring and initializing arrays of objects in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.